Well, thank you very much uh, for coming. We're very happy to be here. Thank you for the Jacksonville Historical Society. We are uh, not from Jacksonville, just to put that out there. I'm from <laughs> Central Florida, Jeff's from Boca Raton. Uh, when we started researching Jacksonville before this presentation, Alan pointed out that Jacksonville has a lot of history. And I was just, I was a little overwhelmed because it goes way back, so. And I would agree with the statement he made that Jacksonville has more history than pretty much any other city. So, again, we're, we're very privileged to be here, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I was born, born in Orlando at Florida Hospital Orlando, which is now Advent Health Orlando. And uh, actually worked there. Uh, I've worked there for 40 years now. Uh, so I had a lot of roots in uh, Orlando. We moved to Tampa when I was seven. And uh, so I lived on Davis Island in Tampa for a while. Uh, really interesting place. And I think my love of history started when I, when I moved to Tampa. Uh, my father had a lot of history books, and I got into the learning about the, how the islands were created back in the 20s. They were man-made islands. Uh, so anyway, my, my love of history started early, and uh, it continued on. It kind of laid dormant for a while. And around 2012, I had uh, got on Facebook, and there was a, a couple of nostalgic groups uh, related to growing up in Orlando and I, I joined a few of those groups and I enjoyed the, the old historic photos the most. So I was kind of not really thrilled with the direction of the, the way the groups were, were laid out and the type of content that they, they would allow. So I decided to start my own group called Historic Orlando. And we focused mainly on the, just the old photos, the old buildings, you know, talking about the old days. It, it gained a pretty quick following, and uh, we decided to take it to a larger scale. We started a group called Historic Florida. Uh, we've now since changed the name of that group, and it's the, na the same name as our book, which is now called Florida History Pictures. And the group is something I'm quite uh, proud of because it's it's immediately interactive and it allows people to share photos from their photo albums like instantly and get instant feedback on it and, and people will, will jump in and, and share their memories of it so it's a, it's an interesting uh, <coughs> forum that we've created it's uh, it's unique in, in, in that it does have that, the ability to just instantly post a photo and instantly get comments back from other members. So it's a, it's what we have uh, what we've created, and we're very proud of it. We feel like it's a, it's become like a massive database in itself now. You can go to the group and search for pretty much any town, and you'll pull up photos from from that town and, and surrounding areas. So. I'll let Jeff speak now. Jeff's going to um, talk about how the group has grown and, and talk about a book that spawned off of the group. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. My name is Jeff Davies. As Mike mentioned back in 2012, when he opened up the Star Florida group, I stumbled upon it. We became fast friends based upon our mutual love of history here in the state of Florida. Originally, I'm from New York, as was mentioned earlier, but I moved to Miami Beach around 1968. Grew up on Miami Beach, but spent a lot of time, about eight summers, in Wildwood, Florida, where it's now the villages, but when I was there, it was a nice summer camp, you know, and Lake Bayona. So, I've always had a love of the entire state. I can remember going to the ranch house as a kid, and the menus or the table was usually the state of Florida and every little county or city, and my father would quiz me on them, or I would see billboards, and we were on the turnpike, and I just had an interest of everywhere other than where I actually was at that moment. <laughs> I just look around and I see buildings such as this one, 
and other ones from down in my area. And I wonder about the people that went to the building when it was new, when they did the groundbreaking, when they did the improvements, and what's going to be there 100 years from now. So we've taken it upon ourselves to be like a living database of history. Because young people today, whereas they're not interested now, they're interested in what they're going to watch on television or what their computers have or what clubs are hot. But here's hoping that when we're all gone, that they're going to look at a building like this one and say, wow. So we've taken it upon ourselves to create, as Mike mentioned, this online community. We're like one giant family. As of today, in our Florida History and Pictures group, we have 260,000 members. And I happened upon a post that Mike did back in 2012, which I sent to him not too long ago, and he wrote, 200 members, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, in this past week alone, we've added over 3,000 people to the group in one week which is unheard of. Now, why are we here? We're here for two reasons. One, to share our book, and to explain how and where that came from. About two and a half years ago, Mike and I received an email from a publishing company in Nova Scotia called McIntyre Purcell. They had started to get a foothold in the book business in the United States. They put out a book on New York, they put one out in Idaho, Arizona, and they were looking at Florida. So they looked at our group and they figured, what a better way to get an entry or football into the state of Florida than through this Facebook group. It's about history, it's about Florida, let's see what they can do for us. So we came up with an agreement as to what to would do, and I said to Mike, if you go to Barnes & Noble right now, there are 430 books of Florida history that they either have in stock or you can order it online. I said to Mike, what are we going to do to make it different? What are we going to do to stand out from all the other cookie cutter books? So we came up with the idea that we were going to reach out to our membership and we were going to say, what do you folks have? What are in your albums? What are in your grandmother's trunk? What's up in your attic? What do you have of historic value that you can contribute to our group. Well, to pleasantly surprise, because a third of our book are photos that are donated from our members. So it's not like you can look through our book and say, oh, I saw this here, or I saw this there. Maybe on some. But at least a third or more of the book are incredible photos. Like, for instance, there's a photo of a member's great-great-grandparents. They're having a fox hunt. There's some beach photos. There's just some very, very unique photos along with our timeline, which I know I'm purging this, but it makes our book better than most. <laughs> we are, we are what we, we used to call each other armchair historians. But after spending the last 15 months traveling throughout the state, to bookstores to do signings, to historical societies such as this one to do presentations. We will consider ourselves bona fide historians. Now there are areas that we know very little about. I don't know much about Jacksonville other than the fact that for the better part of 11 years, I've been posting photos of Jacksonville along with other cities throughout the state. And at last count, our database Contains about 75,000 photos of Florida. So we run the gamut, all the way from a couple standing in front of the casino in Daytona Beach in the 1930s to Apollo 11 lifting off from Cape Canaveral. With that said, Mike has assembled some slides of the Jacksonville area. We have captions with the slides. But by all means, folks, if we're either lacking in content or anyone sees anything that might be incorrect, I beg you, correct him. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I will turn it over to Mike. All right. First of all, 
I want to say thank you to Jacksonville because this this represents which cities our members are from, and you see Jacksonville by far has way more. <laughs> This is as, <laughs> as of uh, the 17th, so we're not quite current, but this is pretty recent. Okay, um, and as Jeff said, we're going we're gonna to encourage you guys to, to reach out and, and... Mark. Yes, sir. Can you get that microphone? I think it's wired, though. Oh, is it? I'll try to speak up a little bit. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, we encourage you guys to... to um, Share with us that you know if we touch on a photo and you guys have a memory about that, please, um, please uh, make, let's make this interactive. Okay, this is just a map of Jacksonville in 1859. Kind of hard to see. All right, this is a a candy manufacturer, A. R. Paxson Manufacturing Confectioner. This is 1875 here in Jacksonville. Okay, this is another map from 1893. And you see it's starting to expand a little bit. Sorry. Thank you, All right. Can we better now? Yes. Yep. All right, this is uh, from 1898. The Army Corps of Review here in Jacksonville. Now, if you notice, on every photo, we will provide the source because we do not own any of these photos. So we always put the caption and the source with every photo out of the set. And in the event a member would like to go to their particular site or look them up to get further information about the sub subject that we're dealing with. These are all on your website, so on the Facebook page? Most of these came from our Facebook page, yes sir. Okay, this is uh, 1898, Camp Cuba Libre, which translates to Camp Liberation of Cuba. And this was the rallying point for American forces during the Spanish-American War. And the camp was originally known as Camp Springfield, which took the name from the area north of downtown. And there's currently a historical marker there now. Okay, thank you. Just put it in the last couple of years. Interesting, thank you. This is another from that Camp Cuba, Cuba Libre, excuse me. This is the Signal Corps Telegraph and Telephone Office. And one more, uh, some Army officers. Okay, we can't do this presentation without touching on the fire. Um, May 3rd, 1901, the fire started in a mattress factory called the Cleveland Fiber Factory at the corner of Beaver and Davis. And in just over eight hours, the flames swept through 146 blocks, 200, excuse me, 2,368 buildings, seven lives, unfortunately, and Almost 10,000 people were left homeless. This is a photo of a day or two after the fire, the corner of Bay and Main. Okay, this is a 1902. Eartha Mary Magdalene White was her name. She started the uh, Clara White Old Folks Home, which treated African Americans and. Uh, is still operating to this day, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And here's another photo of the, the old folks' home from 1902. Okay, this is 1903 uh, Main Street streetcar. <coughs> this is 1905, the Duval County Courthouse which was the third courthouse. It was built in 1902, right after the fire, replacing the second courthouse, which had been destroyed in the fire. Okay, this is the Brewster Hospital. It was the 
first black hospital in Jacksonville, and it served African Americans in Jacksonville from 1901 to 1966. It was founded in 1901 as George Brewster, as the George A. Brewster Hospital and School of Nurse Training, because there was no place for black people to go for treatment after the Great Fire in 1901. Okay, this is 1910, the Hotel Duval. It was located at the intersection of Hogan and Bay. All right, this is the Seminole Club. It was a, a man's social club, I believe. This photo's from 1910. And this building is still there. It's the candy store. Sweet Pete's Candy at 400 North Hogan. Okay, this is Drew's Book and Stationery and Art Store in 1910. It was located at 45 to 49 West Bay Street, where the Urban Grind coffee shop is now. Okay, this is at the entrance to Riverside Park in 1910. Okay, this was a baseball player named Leo Mack. He played for the Jacksonville Tarpons in 1910. This is the Port of Jacksonville in 1910. Still there. Still there. Right, right, still there. That's right. Okay, this is 1912. This is the Burgess Wright Type F pusher biplane flown by Robert Fowler from San Francisco to Jacksonville. And Fowler was attempting to win a prize which had been offered by Rand, uh, William Randolph Hearst, $50,000 to the first person who would complete a transcontinental flight. And he was attempting to break that record, but he, he completed it, but unfortunately it was after the deadline, so he did not get the money. Okay, these are messenger boys from 1913. This is a mu music club from Duval High School in 1914. This is an uh, alligator farm in 1915. Right up next to Okay, this was the Johnny J. Jones Exposition. It was, it was a carnival that traveled around Florida and the Southeast, but mainly here in Florida. This photo's from 1915. Okay, this was the Dixieland Theater before it was converted by the Galma Company into a film studio. This photo was found at the Wisconsin Historical <laughs> Society of all places. Okay, this was the uh, Philadelphia Athletics in 1917. They were training here in Florida, and with war looming over the 1917 season, only a handful of players had been drafted into the mil military, and even fewer enlisted. So those who continued to play took part in military drills to show their support for the war effort. This was from one of our members, it's uh, just, I believe it was his mother, 1917, on Jacksonville Beach. See, now that's the beauty of the group. A photo like Mike's showing you right now, again, you can look at any book, you're not going to find it. But it was in somebody's attic, somebody's photo album, somebody's car. That's what we, we love. And that's really our mission. What, what, we, what we want to accomplish, you know, one day when we're gone, we hope that we were able to, to bring, save some photos from, from a dumpster, you know. Um, we, we kind of take pride in the fact that we have a forum where people can do that. Okay, this is a, just a, a bus in 1917. This is a street scene in 1919. Does anyone know what street that is? I would imagine it's building. It looks like Bayden. 
It's pretty. Union. More or more site. Where's Wayne Woods if we need it? <laughs> okay, this is 1920. The Wrigley Flying Circus visited Jacksonville. It's a promotional tour that visited eight states and 150 cities. In addition to delivering gum to distributors and merchants, they also offered airplane rides for $15. And when they came to a new town, they would drop 25 mini parachutes with gum packs attached to them. And four of the gum packs contained a voucher for a free airplane ride. <laughs> okay, this is the Aragon Hotel in 1920. It was at the corner of Forsyth and Julia. This is the Capitol Theater at 1741 Main in 1924. Uh, this is another member's uh, submitted photo. It's uh, this, this member's grandfather and his mother on an Indian motorcycle here in Jacksonville, 1926. This is just a photo of Jacksonville Beach in 1929. I would assume that's taken from the pier, looking south. Okay, this is 1935. Uh, FDR and his son James aboard the USS Farragut here in Jacksonville. This is the Great Southern Truck Company, 1938. This is the 1940s, this is the Clara White Mission at 613 West Ashley. And if I'm not mistaken, that was a theater that they purchased for that, for the mission there. This is from the 40s, uh, U.S. Navy Shore Patrol, patrolling the beach there, hard at work. <laughs> Making sure no submarines are going to attack any of the neighbors. Okay, this is a 1941 members of the Beverly Twins and All Twins Orchestra in front of the Roosevelt Hotel at the, excuse me, the Hotel Roosevelt on Adams Street. See the identical twins? <laughs> okay, this is the Oriental Gardens in 1941. Does anyone know what is there now? Yes, it's is it still there? Some of Really? That's unfortunate. Okay. Okay, this is from the Daylight Grocery Store, 1942, here in Jacksonville. It brings back some memories. Okay, this is Ashley Street in 1947. There's some type of an event going on. You see the chairs set up in the street. I'm not sure what the event was. Okay, there on the right. Okay, and this is that same area today. There it is. Before. And today. Okay, this is a 1947 P-51 Mustangs of the Florida National Guard, 159th Squadron at Anderson Field here in Jacksonville. Okay, this is a 1947 view looking south at the bridge with the six years old at this time, the John T. Alsop Bridge, also known as the Main Street or the Blue Bridge. It opened in 1941. It's now the oldest of Jacksonville's bridges operating in its original form. This is a billboard from 1948. Okay, this is also from 1948, just a shot from Jacksonville Beach.
Okay, this is from 1949. This is the Five Points Theater at 1028 Park Street. It opened as the Riverside Theater in 1927 and was renamed the Five Points in 1949. In 1977, it closed as a movie theater, changed hands a couple times, and today it operates as the Sunray Center. And there's a view of it. Today. <laughs> Okay, this is the Murray Hill Theater at 932 South Edgewood. This is from 1949, and that's what it looks like today. This is the W.H. Fruit Company, 1950s. Love those cars. Okay, this is 1953 South Atlantic League's Jacksonville Braves, featuring Henry Hank Aaron on the right. And the Braves were the Class A affiliate of the Milwaukee Braves, who would later become the Atlanta Braves in 1950, or excuse me, 1966. This is Gator, the Gator Bowl, 1954. One thing I noticed about this photo I thought was interesting is the way they got these cars parked in here. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to leave if you had an emergency? <laughs> You're going to be there. Okay, this is 1960 Meadowbrook Farms store here in Jacksonville. Another one from Jacksonville Beach. This is 1960s. Okay, this is 1960s Duval County Patrol deputies in front of the Gator Bowl. This is the 1962 the Civic Center on Jacksonville Beach. Jimmy Hendrix once played there. Really? True story. <laughs> Love to have been there. Okay, this is the uh, 1964 the Revolt uh, Monument at Fort Caroline National Memorial. It's a replica of the one he supposedly left there when he first came here in 1560-something. <laughs> okay, this is uh, 1964 from one of our members. Uh, I believe it was her mother and aunt or something on Jacksonville Beach. Another one from the beach, 1965, showing the boardwalk. It still looks like that. <laughs> this is the Regency Square Mall, 1965. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is 1973, the Jacksonville Terminal Platform view of a northbound Amtrak Floridian. <laughs> okay, this is uh, on Adam Street looking east. Not sure of the year of this. It looks to be maybe early 50s. Jacksonville Beach, and probably 1940s. Maybe early 50s. Okay, another one of the Regency Square Mall. <laughs> Looks to be maybe 70s. Okay, oh, the toll booths. <laughs> this is from the 70s, uh, this toll booth. This is the southbound, just over the Fuller Warren Bridge. The Matthews was the first toll bridge with booths that were put up in the 50s shortly after it was built. In 1989, voters approved a sales tax increase that made it possible to do away with the tolls and people rejoice. <laughs> okay, y'all, that concludes our slides for today. So if anyone has any other questions or comments, we're all, we're all ears.